I'm Haley Taylor, and you're listening to The Rough Draft Diaries. Well, Thanksgiving has come and gone. It's been almost a week. That means most, if not all, of your leftovers from Thanksgiving dinner probably have left the fridge by now, and you may be mourning that loss. Well, not to worry, because we will be talking about food on this episode of The Rough Draft Diaries. Not exactly how you cook it or prepare it, but how you grow it. You see, our last connections on the Rough Draft Diaries came from Amy Reed from the Children's Theater Workshop. Now, she only had one nomination in mind, and that was to nominate the Toledo Grows Program, a part of the Toledo Botanical Gardens. So I ventured outside on a very rainy, cold afternoon to meet with the outreach director for the program. Yvonne Dubilak, D-U-B-I-E-L-A-K. It's a rainy day here at the farm. (laughs) It was a rainy day at the farm. The farm meaning the main headquarters for Toledo Groves. Some may call it the classroom or the market stand or the farm, but it truly is the main hub where all the other community gardeners can meet. Well, we'll get to that in a minute. First, we should probably learn what exactly is Toledo Groves. Toledo Groves is a program of Toledo Botanical Garden. And it's actually about 20 years old, actually 20 years this year, I believe. And we've been part of Toledo Botanical Garden for about 18 of those years. It started out as a real grassroots effort with um, several people in the community and people, including some people from the city, from the Department of Neighborhoods. And they just wanted to get people connected back with the land. And so for all of those years, we've been growing. They started with three community gardens in the area. And we've been growing it to the point where we're about 125 community gardens right now. And by supporting them, I mean that we, well, we help people learn to grow and eat healthy food. And we support those gardens by providing free seeds and free seedlings, expertise, advice about growing. Um, we can help people build a garden. We can help people with the steps of, of rallying people to get a community garden together. Just we, we have all kinds of programs to help people learn about eating healthy food and growing healthy food. So as Yvonne said, the headquarters or the farm where we're interviewing is the meeting place for all of the community gardeners. They can receive supplies, assistance, they can experience hands-on tutorials as again the main headquarters is a working farm with gardens, chickens, beehives, tools, everything you need to start a community garden. Then these gardeners return to their own neighborhoods, to their own gardens, prepared to teach the people within their community. And again, this is happening in 125 community gardens throughout the city of Toledo. Throughout the city and throughout the area. So about 70% of our community gardens are in low and moderate income census tracts in the city of Toledo. Some are as far as uh, Bowling Green and some in Sylvania and Oregon, you know, a few here and there, but mostly in this central part of the city. And those gardens are all sizes. They are church gardens, school gardens, other organizations that uh, sponsor large gardens, and then they're your little neighborhood gardens. They're beautifying their neighborhood and they're feeding themselves and their neighbors. Being able to rely on the produce straight from your garden is reason enough, for me at least, to start a community garden, but Yvonne said, the reason to start to grow is much deeper than just cutting down on a grocery bill. Well, so many people have become disconnected from their food, their source of their food. You know, they think that French fries from McDonald's are a vegetable, you know, or they think everything comes from the grocery store. I heard somebody say one day, well, if it's not wrapped in cellophane, it's not good, right? You know, they're, they're disconnected from where it really comes from and what good fresh food food tastes like. So in order to help people to eat healthier, you know, and to help the environment, you know, we're not shipping things in from hundreds of miles away, uh, but more importantly, to to eat more nutritious food, it, it loses that nutritional value when it travels. In the Toledo area, we've got such great land, you know, that our whole area is just rich for agriculture, and we've kind of lost that. We've gotten away from that. One of the ways Toledo Grows helps to reestablish a connection with the land and the people is through their job training program. This is a program associated with the Lucas County Juvenile Courts. Young men who are adjudicated through the Juvenile Justice Program are mentored and work paid jobs on the farm. This helps to integrate and train them for future employment. And Yvonne says this program is the easiest way one can see the impact that gardening has on the community. 
We had a kid here, I think the first year, the first summer I was here, and he had, he had some anger issues, really. He had some uh, difficult times, and he, I found that he felt very connected to the chickens. There was something about going out there. If he had, if he just was really having a hard day, he needed to feel nurturing in some way. So he'd go out and sit with the chickens and just pet. He had one chicken, he always just sat and just petted it. And it would calm him down and kind of get him grounded, get him rooted a little bit. Uh, but yeah, especially the youth, the young men, it's just a whole new thing for them and it's fun to watch them learn. Now, if you're wondering how you can learn to become a gardener, Yvonne has some tips that as well. Oh, just start. I mean, just get in the soil and dig. A lot of times it's easy for people just to start with one little raised bed, grow something you like, something that's easy, and just experiment, you know. It doesn't take a genius to garden. It just takes a little bit of will to want to do it. And if you need any help, the Toledo Grows program and its surrounding communities will be there to give you a hand. For now, I'm Haley Taylor, and thanks for listening to this episode of The Rough Draft Diary.